Hello and welcome to this free trade company interview. I'm Dan Lane. Before we get started, can I just remind you to sign up for our Honey newsletter to find out what's happening in the markets every single day, including Saturday. With that said, let me introduce our guest today, President of Arrival, Avinash Rugapur. Avinash, thanks very much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Dan. So I thought we'd just kick off. For anyone who hasn't caught up with Arrival or doesn't know what the company is, who are you and what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, so I think uh, off the bat, it's what Arrival is doing is creating electric vehicles that are at a similar price point to diesel equivalents. So uh, that is important because that's when the commercial vehicle segment, which we're uh, currently focused on, will switch over to a full electric when you can make a purchase decision where you can buy a sim an electric vehicle at a similar price to di diesel with all the better attributes and lower total cost of ownership. Uh, we believe that's the inflection point for rapid adoption of EVs. To do that, we are vertically integrated, so we develop uh, all of our own technology. Uh, we've been at this for six years. We have over 1,600 employees um, headquartered uh, in the UK, we're, but we're also all around the world. And so, you know, we've got layers of tech. We design and develop our own components, our own composite material, which is fully recyclable. That forms the body. We have our own skateboard platform that lets us build different variants. And we produce it all in a micro factory, which is a game-changing production method that's really, uh, in a lot of ways, the opposite to what's been done over the last 100 years, where we produce vehicles in low capex, low footprint micro factories that are 20,000 odd square meters located uh, in warehouses, existing warehouses that you can convert to production facilities within six months. And that's important because you can produce vehicles, you know, the capex is, is around 50 million US dollars. Uh, you can produce vehicles and be profitable at lower volumes, but you can also use the micro factory is actually like a product for us. And we can produce multiple vehicles from that micro factory as well. So it's really just a, a totally new way, a, a reinvention of how electric vehicles are produced. Excellent. And I think, um, I think you're concentrating more on the commercial side of things, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that, uh, what, what, what's been the decision there? Yeah, it's because if you think about the commercial vehicle segment, it's actually been underserved for so long. And, you know, if you look at the vans and, and the buses and a lot of what's out there already, it's, you know, it's pretty old tech that's just been sort of continuously improved, but it hasn't kept up to speed with where technology is today. That's on software, that's on robotics, that's on how you use data, it's on user experience. And so part of that is that production method that I was mentioning earlier. You know, the, the typical production process is a fixed line. All of the parts come to the line. It's at a fixed speed. And you have to really produce hundreds of thousands of vehicles to be profitable. Really low margin businesses that is the typical approach. But with Arrival, because we sort of broke that, that way of um, need for economies of scale uh, and we can produce vehicles using these technologies, like I like to think of Arrival not as producing just best-in-class EVs, but as producing the systems that produce best-in-class EVs. So we can do anything in that commercial vehicle segment, right? We've got the bus that we've announced. We're doing a trial with First Group in, in, um, later in the year. We've got the electric van. We've got a small vehicle platform that we've announced. And it's focused because the commercial vehicle segment, as I mentioned, it's, it's been underserved. Uh, the typical industry can't cope with the requirements and the, and the configurations that are needed in those products, again, because of this manufacturing system. Um, it really is focused on uptime and utilization. And it's a place where electrification makes sense now. You know, we have got a growing, you take e-commerce and, and logistics, it's a growing market with COVID, but even before that, it's an area that really needs to go green and needs to happen now. And there isn't a product that can compare to an arrival product. So it was a great first uh, market for us to focus on. And even things like infrastructure, you know, these vehicles all return to a depot. That's a simpler problem to solve than in a retail segment where basically the vehicles are just can be anywhere and, and charging anywhere overnight, whereas a depot, it's a concentrated environment. Uh, and so, yeah, so operationally, uh, you know, these, these folks really understand what the use of the vehicle is. It's all about the function. And so it was a perfect place for us to start uh, our focus on. And you touched on battery and kind of fuel cell technology there. I mean, that, that kind of space is huge for free trade investors at the minute. Um, is, is range something you think about when it comes to vehicles? That's been quite a hot topic in, um, in the broader industry, really. Yeah, so we, we, uh, we're using battery electric vehicles. So uh, that's to begin with. But our technology, as I mentioned earlier, because we design our own components, they're designed to be upgraded over time. 
So if battery tech gets better or hydrogen fuel cell makes sense, we can actually switch that, that powertrain over to any sort of uh, zero emission or clean, clean energy source. But in terms of range, I mean, there's a few things to focus on. One is the energy density that you get from the battery itself. Uh, then there is the number of the, the capacity that you can put into a vehicle. So if you think of an arrival vehicle, the way we've done our battery module, instead of a, a pack, we actually have modules that you can just add as many modules as you need. Kind of like Lego, right? You can just literally add capacity as needed. Uh, that's important in the commercial vehicle segment because some vehicles do 300 kilometers. You know, some vehicles do under 100 kilometers because some are only doing city routes. And if you can size the battery like we can at arrival, the, the customer only pays for the capacity that they need because the battery is the uh, most, important, most uh, expensive part of the vehicle. And then the other way to think about uh, the range is also the weight. So with our composite materials, you know, being such lightweight and, and the, way our, uh, the way our vertical integration allows us to optimize each one of the components, the composite, the body, uh, the, the skateboard platform, you know, it's designed to be lighter and more efficient. So for example, our bus, depending on the configuration, is about eight to nine tons. Uh, anything else out there is you know, around 13 tons. So that's significantly different. Our van, is a four-ton gross vehicle weight with a two-ton payload. So, you know, a two-ton vehicle, approximately two-ton payload. So when you have that sort of weight um, and battery efficiency and the fact that you can size the capacity, uh, range isn't really a concern with the way we've done our vehicles. And I, I, I guess on that, I mean, I would, I, in pre preparation for this, I looked at some of your videos online. I would suggest anyone to have a look at those. They're absolutely fantastic. To, to have a look at actually the, the sustainability and the longevity of the, of the products that you're making there. Um, I think, you know, some uh, coming in from some of our investors or questions around, you know, it's a really exciting time for you guys coming to the market through a SPAC. Um, can you take us through, you know, maybe a reason why you would have done that instead of kind of the traditional IBO program? Yeah, yeah, sure. And I think it's an important question. Um, so if you look at, if I go back to the history of Arrival, so it was founded six years ago, and it was actually self-funded through uh, the founder, Dennis Erdlov, and CEO, uh, his own investment company. So he self-funded the company up until about two years ago, where we uh, had a 100 million euro investment from Hyundai and Kia. We also had an investment from UPS, and most recently, we had about $100 million from BlackRock. And so we actually were well-funded. Uh, we had developed the technology for over the last six years. So the technology is mature. You know, our components have been driven in, in on-road. You know, we've got uh, prototype vehicles right now and, and trial vehicles being built. So actually going on the road, um, you know, we've got the composite materials, all those composites that you referred to in the video, they're coming off our, our own production facility. You know, the, I think I mentioned earlier, 1,600 people, 90% uh, of those are, engineers 50 percent of software the other 50 are between like robotics and and automotive traditional automotive when you look at the maturity level of arrival uh, and with the uh, you know the order book uh, and the price point that we were at the fact we've got two micro factories we've got one in vista in the uk and we've got one in um, rock hill in south carolina they're actually being commissioned right now so start of production for the bus for example is at the end of this year the van is next year we're just at a mature place. And so when we looked at the different options, obviously there was direct listing, there's the traditional IPO that you mentioned, there was the uh, possibility to stay private. It made the most strategic sense for our business uh, because we met a SPAC partner that was really aligned in the mission and vision of arrival. So CIIG, which is the, the SPAC partner that we uh, met, have merged with or in the process of basically finalizing that. Um, the CEO, Peter Cunio, he's the ex-CEO of Marvel. He's been on public boards of companies uh, for a long, he's, you know, long uh, history of guiding companies through different phases. He's actually joining our board and he's going to be actually the, the chairman of that board. So he, he and, the, and his team were really in line with the vision of what we're doing. That was really important that it wasn't just you know, a financial transaction. It, it was a way of expanding the capability of arrival not just in the UK, but also in the US and other places around the world. And then with the access to capital, it's all about scaling. So, you know, we'll be uh, scaling out the micro factories and bring the products to market later this year. So, you know, when we looked at the different options, the SPAC made the most sense for us. And do you know that the, the scaling, I'm really interested in that actually. So, yeah, I mean, 
through this process, you're obviously getting the synergies with investors that you really, you know, that you really fit well with. What does what does the near term future look like for Arrival then? I think most important about any company, it's first of all, it's the team and the, the, the talent and the culture. At, at the end of the day, um, a great team will do great things. So for us, primary focus number one is always going to be our culture. And then obviously it's the deep technology that we've, that we've developed. It's about bringing those together in the packages and, and for example, the bus and the van and getting those to market now. And so really the focus is on, you know, getting the micro factory scaled out in multiple locations around the world, uh, starting production later this year, going through the trials. So for example, the bus has a different sales cycle to the van. They'll be driven on road, on route. And that's something that we're heavily focused on, on road uh, usage of the vehicles. And then it's that straight line through to start a production and then, uh, and then scale. So, and that's where, you know, we're hyper focused on, and that's really the, the key work that, uh, that, talent the team I mentioned is putting all their time and energy into this year. And longer term, is there a, is there a desire to go more into the consumer space or is commercial where you see um, your future? I can't speak too much about that for now. What I would say is, again, back to focus. It's extremely important to be focused. So, you know, in the, in the uh, early years, that commercial vehicle segment, there's so many different vehicle types within that that, I, you know, have the same problems I mentioned earlier. You know, they're underserved. They're not the right, they're not fit for purpose. They're too costly. Uh, that we can address. So, you know, the bus, the van, the large van, the small vehicle platform, we now a small vehicle platform as well for 2023. So that is the, uh, definitely the initial focus of the company. What I would say is, as I mentioned earlier, the way Arrival has created this technology is it's, it's not just about the end product. It's the systems that create the end product. So you've got the micro factory, the composites, the components, the skateboard, the software, Right. So as I mentioned, half the teams in software, that software, for example, allows the components to be upgraded over time. It's like plug and play. But we do all the control level software. We have all the data on how the vehicles are working. So you can do uh, predictive health monitoring, real time uh, analysis of the vehicle. You know, all of that is data that can go to the fleet operators and the fleet management tools. So that's our focus. And then expanding the ecosystem out to the software and services uh, that, that come from that. But because those systems can create any type of vehicle, uh, you know, the, the sky's kind of limit in what, we, what we're doing. But right now, the focus is on the commercial segment. Um, I guess, you do know, one, one of the big draws for investors to arrival might be its, um, its focus on sustainability and this kind of recycling of products. Again, there's videos online showing how these different parts are, you know, extremely durable and can be put back into production very, very quickly. Um, how much of that sustainability forms kind of the essence of what you do? Uh, a huge part. I think back to the talent, I think most folks at Arrival are driven by that, that singular mission of a new transportation ecosystem that's clean, um, that's uh, uh, not a negative to the environment, you know, that's re recyclable, that's sustainable. And so even when we think about, you know, if we go through the technologies, if we think about the micro factory, it's all about reducing, you know, waste to landfill, reducing the water, reducing the energy footprint, uh, moving to renewable energy where possible to power it. Uh, when, if, when we look at the components, so if you think about these battery, so, you know, some of our components that are like the battery, the human machine interface, the inverters, all of that, they're all actually reused. So we take the same battery that we put in the van as the same battery module that goes in the bus and same in the, the small vehicle platform. But because we can upgrade them over time, we can actually bring them out of the vehicle and, for example, use them for energy storage systems or, you know, whatever other use case that we need for those, for those components. So they, they can be constantly reused. And then the composite, I mean, the composite's incredible. You know, you don't need a paint shop. You don't need a metal stamping plant. You know, a paint shop in particular requires a whole bunch of environmental clearances, uh, which, you know, we sort of just get rid of completely. And so, with our composite, it's a regularly available uh, materials that it's a polyprop and a glass fiber it comes together. Uh, you mentioned the durability, you know, these are more durable than steel. So even not just on the recyclable part, it's just on the fact that you're changing them less because they're more durable, right? That, you know, increases the length of use of that, of that, um, of that part. And so that obviously has a net positive benefit to the environment. But if they are damaged, we can take them back 
we can literally break them back down into their raw components and recycle them back into the process. So it's like 100% recyclable. It's, it's, it's really incredible. So when you, when you think about uh, uh, all of those layers of tech and then you think about the data that we get to optimize the route and help the uh, operator understand their, their route planning, that can be small, medium ent enterprises, that can be large folks, you know, tools that aren't typically available uh, to this segment. When you think about all of that and the optimization that's going on, I mean, it's all based on this idea of how can we make this more sustainable for our society. Avinash, you know, I could talk to you about that all day, but I think that's all we have time for now. Um, listen, best of luck, and uh, I really hope we can catch up again soon. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Thanks very much.